All right, today we're gonna do a sugar roll. So a sugar roll is a great way to check your mite, varroa mite infestation. It's not a perfect science, but it'll give you a good indication as to what mite load level you have currently. And you do these sugar rolls periodically just to get a, a sense of how your mite load is increasing over the duration of the uh, beekeeping season. So uh, what I've got here for supplies, this is how I do it, there's many other ways of doing it, but we have a mason jar that has a hardware cloth top, right? So it's got a mesh screen at the top. And what I have is a line drawn on, which will indicate about a half a cup of bees. So we want half a cup of bees because a half a cup of bees is around 300. And we'll explain exactly how to get the proper count after that. So I'm gonna get half a cup of bees in here. And then using icing sugar, I'm going to coat the bees, roll them around in this jar until the, uh, the and what that does is, is it actually uh, detaches the mites from the bees, any bees that have mites on them. Uh, those mites will detach and will then be able to dump them out into a little container of water. And once they're dumped into that container of water, the sugar, icing sugar that coating the mites will dissolve and we'll see the mites pretty plainly if there are any, that is. So, let's get to it. All right, so uh, you, you want to select one frame of brood and you want it from the center of the brood nest, right? So, I found a frame here. It's got a nice covering of bees. Um, now I'm going to dump these bees into a little bucket, uh, into the little uh, Rubbermaid container. Basically pour them into the mason jar and put the lid on. So, approximately half a cup, might be a little bit more. Yeah, slightly more, but there we go. Now to put the sugar on it. And I always like to put quite a bit just for a good measure. One or two tablespoons, I think, is something like that. It should do the trick. And there we go. Sugar's in. Time to roll. Make sure you're not, you don't have the jar upside down at this point with the screen pointing towards the ground because what's gonna happen is any mites will be dislodged into the grass. You're, you're going to get a pretty inaccurate count. Okay, I'm done with the sugar roll. Um, I'm going to leave this jar here for about a minute, two minutes. Um, then I'm going to dump it into the uh, little plastic container of water and we're going to count the mites. Let's see our samples doing. It's been about a couple minutes now so it's time to check the mites. Okay, we're going to dump some water into this empty bucket. I'm just going to start shaking these uh, these bees, obviously with the mesh pointing down to dis, uh, to see any any of the mites that have been uh, dislodged from the bees are going to uh, hopefully drop into this bucket, and we're going to see them evident in the water. So I give it a good shake. 
shake it for a minute or so. Now here's the sample. I actually didn't get very many mites in this check at all. So I'm not sure we're gonna be able to see them and focus on them. There's actually only, what I can see, three mites. I'll try and point at it. So there's one there. There's one there and another one there so they're pretty obvious to see especially if there's a lot of them um, obviously in this case there's only three so let's talk about what that means how the calculation goes generally is um, you, you do this you do the count per 100 bees so with our sample we had 300 bees remember in that half a cup of, of uh, bees in the mason jar so we divide basically what we counted, the number of mites, by three. I found three mites in this sample, so I'm gonna divide by that by three, and I got one. And then what you do is because half mm -hmm. the mites are, you know, there may be a, a bunch of mites that are still in the cells, you generally double that count. So I ended up with one from the sample, I'm gonna double that, I've got two. So that's still fairly uh, in reasonable levels at this point. Um, there's no alarm at this, juncture and no need to really treat right away obviously I will keep monitoring there are mites in the uh, in the colony in the hive um, and once they reach um, you know six seven eight that range I'll probably consider doing some sort of treatment uh, whatever that may be here are the bees that are in the mason jar all we got to do now is just dump them right back in the hive and they're just gonna go back inside that uh, that hole in the inner cover um, not really too worse for wear, a little bit banged up, but uh, the other bees will nurse them back to health and clean them up and clean up any, any residue icing sugar on them, and uh, they'll be good to go. So this, this method is nice because it doesn't actually really harm the bees uh, like, a, uh, like an alcohol wash does. It may not be as accurate necessarily, but uh, it gives you a good indicator that you can measure as you go through your beekeeping season. The bees have been dumped in. You can see they're just hovering there, kind of getting orientated to, them, to their uh, surroundings again. They've been a bit of a wild ride. You can see other bees already climbing on top of them, cleaning them off. So it's a pretty humane method of checking for mites. Happy beekeeping. Mm -hmm.